Video Lecture 4.5, The Life Cycle of a Mid-Latitude Cyclonic System, which we can relate to human beings. Uh, and so human beings, we have our origin, our birth, which we'll refer to as cyclogenesis. Uh, but then over time, we grow up, we become more mature, we grow older, we'll refer to that as the open stage, and then finally, we die. And so we'll think of the mid-latitude cyclonic system, its death as it ends. Keep in mind that we've discussed in the previous video lecture that these last about three to ten days. We call that the occluded stage. The beginnings of a mid-latitude cyclonic system, or cyclogenesis, occurs when converging and conflicting air meet. What do I mean by conflicting air? Air that has different temperature, pressure, and moisture characteristics. And this is going to bring unstable conditions. When we showcase this on a map, we illustrate this as a stationary front. This is a boundary between two air masses that have different characteristics, as I mentioned above. And so we can relate this to human beings. A mother meets a father and then creates... Uh, obviously, an off offspring via, uh, uh, never mind. Uh, and so one of the things we'll see with the stationary front on a map is a symbol that is showcased here. Uh, so this makes sense because this is a warm air mass meeting a cold air mass. And so this is the origins of a low pressure. And so a low pressure cyclone will soon uh, start to develop. And in the northern hemisphere, it'll spin counterclockwise. Here we have two high pressures, one to our south and one to our north. We already know that this here is going to represent that subtropical high pressure where it's going to be quite warm. Here we got cold, dry air from our north to polar high pressure, that cold, dry uh, Canadian air. We know the right hand bend for both of these is going to be due to the Coriolis force. Uh, and thus, once again, two highs make a low. So two high pressures are then going to create here a low pressure. Uh, but before we get to that origins of that mid latitude cyclonic system, we have to have two individuals coming in contact with each other, in this case uh, the warm moist air from the south and the cold dry air from the north, and the origins we see that stationary front that has formed. Once again, two highs make a low. Why does a low pressure go counterclockwise? We kind of already know this, but we don't really know why. Why? We think about this low pressure center. If imagine this is a compact disc, a CD. This is what they used to play music in the 90s with. If I put a compact disc right here and I had these arrows, what would happen is if I was deflecting on this side of that compact disc and deflecting on that side, what it would do is you create a counterclockwise flow. A counterclockwise flow, which we see uh, right here. Uh, so that counterclockwise flow is due to kind of the center being rubbed on this one side and rubbed on that one creates that counterclockwise. Once again, relating a mid-latitude cyclonic system and its life cycle to human beings as we grow up, childhood to teenage years, uh, we can relate that to the open stage. And here's where we have the formation of warm and cold fronts. And so the mid-latitude cyclonic system starts to take on a certain character. We can find in the northern hemisphere that the cold fronts will sweep around the southern edge of a low pressure center, of a mid-latitude cyclonic system center which is something that will be very important as we go further. One of the things we also talked about is the open stage, the formation of fronts. So beforehand, we've got our low pressure center, but we've got a stationary front. Pretty much all of this cold, dry, all of this warm, wet. However, over time, as we know, low pressures, they have a, in the northern hemisphere, the cold fronts sweep around the southern side of that low pressure center. We can see that here. Further, this area right here, right here, right now, their winds are coming from the southwest, quite warm. However, they're about five minutes away. They're in no time. As this cold front comes around, all of a sudden, the winds are shift shifting directions uh, completely. Temperature goes down considerably. Pressure increases considerably once that cold front comes through. Other things to note is the arrows. The arrows denote a general counterclockwise, but also an inward spiraling uh, wind pattern that we would find around that low pressure center. So over time, what's going to happen is this cold front is going to, over time, continue to catch up with that warm front. Uh, so here's our warm front, showcasing that all of this being more moist air behind that warm front. But as soon as that cold dry air comes around, that southern edge, we're going to see a completely different change uh, in our weather characteristics. Here's a pop quiz, and so I'll let you pause it. Your goal is to match the number with the letter. Pause now. And if you would have unpaused, we would have been able to find that 1 matches with moist warm air, 5 matches with cold dry air, 2 would be a west wind, and if 2 was on the north side of the low pressure center, we would have an east wind, 
for in front of the warm front, four, we would associate that with a nimbostratus cloud, and then finally a cumulonimbus cloud, there were three is. Like I mentioned before, cold fronts move faster than warm fronts. And so as that cold front comes around the southern side of a low pressure center, eventually it's going to catch up to the warm front. And when that occurs, we have reached the occluded stage or the end of a mid-latitude cyclonic system's life cycle. One of the things is precipitation often will still occur along this uh, occluded front, uh, but we can see this on the weather map showcased as a purple uh, symbol. Makes sense. Red plus blue equals purple. Uh, but also you can see the direction that this occluded front is moving is from, this, from the bottom of the slide to the top, but you can also see the semicircles and triangles uh, um, uh, combined in this symbol here. Now we'll relate a life cycle of a mid-latitude cyclonic system, a low pressure, uh, to this weather map here, very similar to what you'll do in assignment two. Uh, and one of the things you'll note, if you note that these weather symbols which are provided in the assignment two instructions describe what you're looking at, uh, but one of the things you'll notice about the wind patterns uh, above the black circle illustrating the low pressure center uh, is that they're all coming from the north. The winds are all coming from the north. They're also the temperature is cooler. Uh, but whereas from the south, south of that low pressure, and all this pretty much in the bottom half, you find much warmer temperatures, but you do see that the wind is coming from the south. And so what you're seeing here is a great example of conflicting air masses. Air that's quite warm from the south that's coming into contact with air that's quite cool from the north forming the stationary front that we see here on the left hand side. Aided by the meandering polar jet stream this mid-latitude cyclonic system is going to move from the west to the northeast. And so this low pressure we can see the beginnings of a cold front. The cold front has begun. Notice the winds behind the cold front, how they are now coming from the northwest, which is much different than the winds that are ahead of the cold front. The, head, the winds that are ahead of the cold front or in front of it are from the south. And so one of the things is the cold front brings very changing uh, weather characteristics where wind will be coming from the south and then the cold front will arrive and then the winds will be coming from the northwest. As the slow pressure moves further to the northeast, you can see how the cold front has begun to sweep around the southern edge of that low pressure center. Further, you can see the formation of a warm front there in Wisconsin and Michigan. So this low pressure will be continuing to move to the northeast. We're now, it's definitely reached what we refer to as open stage. Now when that cold front and warm front are clearly defined and clearly described. Now if you look at the weather characteristics for those in Wisconsin, right now it's very much a warm day, uh, winds are from the south, however what's going to happen is that low pressure is going to move through and you'll note that the temperature characteristics there in Wisconsin will soon be quite different. Now we can see the first instance of the occluded stage beginning. Uh, and so if you look at the low pressure center, coming out of the low pressure center is an occluded front. Uh, you can see that with those two little symbols that are purple. And so we are now reaching the occluded stage, and it's starting to reach the end of a life cycle of a mid-latitude cyclonic system. Now in Wisconsin, temperature characteristics, wind direction has changed considerably as that cold front has continued to sweep around the southern side of that low pressure center. Further occlusion has continued as that occluded front has continued to grow outward from the low pressure center. And so we can see how that cold front is now caught up with the warm front. Another thing you'll notice around that low pressure, you'll notice that the winds are moving very much in a counterclockwise flow, which once again makes sense with the characteristics of a low pressure. Uh, one thing you'll also note is following this low pressure uh, is a high pressure which will be found in southern Nebraska. This is very typical as far as low pressures coming through and then high pressures following and vice versa.